Hello everyone, welcome back to Simulated Heaven. I was very lucky to get a key from Playway for this game, Thief Simulator 2. And when I saw that, I thought, why not try it out? Because I did actually like Thief Simulator 1 a lot more than I thought I would. Yes, the graphics were slightly janky. Yes, the gameplay was slightly janky. The, the voice acting in that first game was also pretty janky. But overall, it was a lot more fun breaking into houses and stealing things than I thought it would be. So yeah, I thought why not actually give this game a go. Although I'll say that the game actually comes out in about a week so that this is the early release version of the game. So there might be some things in this game that they do actually fix for the full release. Anyway, without further ado, let's play the game together and see how it is. This is obviously the intro to the story mode. The call boom. There they are. They, yes, they are coming. Let's grab this money on the side. Let's get out the window. He's here. Stop. How did they see me? Got you, bastard. Wow. Charming. I just realized that um, I changed the sensitivity of the camera. And I th and it seems like I've maybe done it a bit too much. You have one minute. Why do I even need to look at the security camera again? I need to do it faster this time. See? Like that. And I need to pick up my stuff. Like this. And the thing is... He's not here. They don't even really tell me why... I'm being hunted. See, I'm being hunted by random people at the start of the game and they're not really telling me why it would be nice for some kind of intro, you know, because you're straight into the action, so to speak. And apparently this is my truck. Madison Street, so I'm going to Madison Street. So that kind of fast travel style is similar to the first game. The game is running pretty okay so far. I'd be interested to see how it runs. All right, so you're in some deep shit. It took long enough. Look, you're my friend and all. I'll help you get out of this mess, but not for free. You have a whole criminal organization going after you. Let me think what can be done. Let's say you piss off a few people, break into a couple houses, and then you get my help. How's that? Okay. For starters, I'd go to 102 and steal some shit from there. It should be empty. Use your crowbar to get inside. So pretty much this is giving me massive deja vu from the first game because this is pretty much the setup to the first game as well. Um, I will say though the graphics look quite a lot better than the first game as you would expect. And so far it's running okay. We'll see if that continues. Now you can see in the bottom left hand side I got like a mini map. So I can see 102 on there. Here we go, 102, and we can head, try and head around the back to break in. Now, this is exactly the same as the first game. They give you a house that doesn't have anyone in it, so you just first get the idea of breaking in. Um, it says I got a tutorial, passing time. To pass time, you can either sleep at your house or rest in your car at the nearest parking lot, okay? And then we're going to go and we're going to, oh, here we go, step ladder. What a coincidence, we've got a step ladder. Oh, we've got a camera. That's pretty obviously a camera, which I should crouch and go past as carefully as possible. I don't believe they had those kind of cameras in the first game. It's a little bit weird that it's red, but I suppose they're doing that on purpose so we can see the arc of it a bit better. Like I said, this is a house that should be empty. So I don't need to worry about being caught. Let's go around the outside, pick up the money. Ooh, is that beer? But it won't let me pick up the beer. Oh, well. Yeah, let's go around the outside. Oh, a safe. Uh, I can't actually crack this. So that's actually kind of cool. There's something here that I need to come back to when I've leveled up later. We can't really steal a barbecue. We've got money. Oh, 
in this house it seems like that people like to leave random amounts of money lying around all the better for me then okay. what's awful right so we're gonna obviously find an open window like the first game here we go we climb through someone has a lot of toilet roll um, and we're gonna see what there is here for me to steal it says I need to steal enough for me to level up um, I'm not thinking there's going to be much in here you can either open the door slowly or quickly like that but because there's no one here in this house I can open everything quickly but I do kind of like that mechanic of being able to open things slowly if you want to okay it's quite hard to see in that first one a load of files more files what a load of rubbish don't see anything on here that is stealable oh I was wrong there's a vase that is very stealable nothing stealable nothing oh hang on is that a pen drive or oh, a flash drive that is stealable you have to be very careful and pay attention then unlike I was doing at the beginning okay that's not stealable this is stealable. A calculator in this day and age probably doesn't have much value. A U phone, a damaged U phone, nonetheless. All right, so let's keep going until it tells me that I've leveled up. Actually, I'm just going to steal everything that I'm able to steal in here because if there's no one here, why not? Make hay while the sun shines, that's what they say. All right. Of course, you know, I am a highly considerate thief. I'm going to close all the doors of everything when I've finished stealing the contents. Very nice. Time to sell this stuff so you can pay me. Yeah. Drive to Crazy Joe's so again, the same as the first house. game. Exactly. You steal things from a house with no one in it. You go to a pawn shop and you sell said items. So, you know, I suppose as an introduction to the game that's okay it's kind of just um, showing you the mechanics the basic mechanics of the game although something which I don't think was in the first game I could be wrong um, I think Steeler Boy in there um, is you can hide look I don't remember seeing this in the first game where you could hide so that's kind of handy if there is someone in the house it kind of gives you this alien isolation ability to uh, hide from people which I think is kind of cool because in the first game from what I can remember because I did play a while ago um, when someone was in the house and when they had you cornered you were pretty much stuck you know so at least in this game did I open these? Yes, I did. So at least in this game, you feel like you got a bit more of a chance um, to hide and not to get immediately seen, you know. Oh, I think I'm crouching, yeah. Ooh, wine. Nice wine. What is that? Whale cereal. That looks funny. Someone likes wine in this household. A toaster. I'll take that. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing nothing and I don't think you can open that um, nothing you can't open that you apparently they're not valuable however a pot is valuable apparently as is a teapot or oh, my backpack is full my backpack is full oh the wine okay um, I should drop an item that is not worth much. I'm assuming a frying pan is not worth much. I'm assuming the wine is worth more. What do you think? Um, so I think the frying pan we're going to drop. Um, instead, we're going to take the wine. I think the wine would be worth more, wouldn't it? Uh, the teapot. It's probably worth more. But do I have anything in there? Maybe the pot. Hmm. 
wine, small vase, china vase, radio. So yeah, I think, every, oh, the calculator, surely that's not valuable. What do you think? But in this game, you never know. Okay, let's just stick with what we have for now. And we're gonna climb back out this. Oh, actually, I think we can just walk through the front door. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if it was open, but I did actually pick up a key. So that might be why I could just open it that time. But I didn't check, did I, to be fair. Now, in the first game, you have to be really careful when you're walking out of houses that you've just raided because if anyone sees you walking out usually you get busted i'm assuming it's the same in this game and that is realistic because if you just randomly walk out the front door of a house you've just raided uh, that's probably not the best idea in the world anywho back to our vehicle and i think it's yeah it's asking us to drive to the pawn shop for some reason in this game i appear to be a midget See, either that or I've got the tallest vehicle in the world. <laughs> anyway, so from what I have seen, the driving in this game is not awful. Uh, in the first game, it's not brilliant and it is a bit glitchy. This game, first impressions, it seems a little bit improved, but I do really wish you could drive everywhere. They do have that weird fast fast travel mechanic. Whoops. Whoops. If I'm honest, I wish you could just drive everywhere. And I wish I wasn't a midget. Okay, so this is the pawn area, the pawn shop, I should say. Looks interesting, this area. Oh, there's a guy over here. What's he doing? Lock picking. So I need to lock pick. Then there's a random guy in there. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, the tenant heard me. So that's not a good thing. Yes, I'm running. So obviously we're not supposed to. What? What do you mean I was caught? I didn't do anything. I literally did nothing. I literally just looked in the window at the guy, and I was apparently caught. So, hmm, interesting. What was I caught for doing wrong there? That is so weird. It's just a random guy in, in a porter cabin and it's right by the pawn shop. So why is that a bad thing for me to go over there? Anyway, I'm not going over, over there again, clearly. We've got an ATM here. Nice. How am I doing? I'm doing fine. So I'm assuming I just sell all my stuff to you yep sell all it's probably not going to be a lot of money but hopefully it's enough to start out anyway okay answer the phone that's how it goes keep the money it'll be rent for your new hideout i need something from 104 and to break in there we need a drone it happens the guy from 103 ordered a drone recently 103 Okay, skills. In your inventory, you can select the skills tab and acquire new abilities. You have to level up to get new points you can use. To level up, still as many things as you can. Ah. Skills tab. Do I have a point now? Yes, I do. Okay. So this looks like the blue one. So item highlight. Oh, I can't even do that. Required level five. Okay. So I've looks like I've only got one choice then. It's looking like I've only got one choice, which is not much for choice. Marking. Okay. Well, I need that for the next mission. So we're going to learn that because we need that. Okay, where is he marked? All the way over there. So I, I suppose I should drive over there so that I'm closer to the area that he marked, possibly. And then I'll go to see, I think it said three o'clock, right? Go to the marked spot at three o'clock. Okay, is, I 
think this is the mark spot, right? The S marks the spot. So let's park where we were before. I believe we were over here before, weren't we? The worst parking in the world. Pretty much. Oh, look. Parcel lockers. Interesting. Parcel locker. I can use it and it's got a code. Enter your delivery code. That's kind of cool. And that you can get deliveries. I imagine. And I should close my door, shouldn't I? That's a good start. Right. Cups. Nope. Cakes and cupcakes. 25% off. Dessert. The best advert in the world. That is. So yeah, it's a bit like in the first game where you've got a boundary of the map of the area and then if you drive in your car out this area you have the option to teleport you see i do wish it was a seamless world that you could just drive around but i suppose this is probably a lower budget game right so i mean i suppose it's maybe better for them to for them to do it like this if they don't have the budget for a full map, maybe. Oh. Key to, I don't need that key. Key, so let's look, let's, oops. Oh, that was weird. So I think I just picked up. No, I didn't. Oh, crowbar flashlight, that's how it works. Okay. What's this? I'm not bleeding, that's good then. Let's get in the other side. So I need to wake up at three o'clock. In my car, my midget car. Uh, there we go, sleep until 1500. Let's do that. And then we need to learn to mark someone. Wow, this is a long time to hang around in a car. Isn't that a bit suspicious? <laughs> just to hang around in a in a car but very close anyway right we're getting out again so we have to mark that geezer who's in his house apparently so I'm, I'm assuming I think I had to do this in the first game and I think you go around the back it's kind of more elevated at the back and I think you just use these elevations to spot the guy you know and work out his timings I suppose or am I supposed to actually go up close am I mm. yeah it looks like I'm supposed to go up close I think the diamond sign is telling me to go there oh here we go they've made they've manufactured something for me Okay, so that was easy. All right, now do some planning. You'll see his next destination. It's a very handy skill. Planning mode. Okay, let's look at the tutorial. Planning mode is a skill to help you plan your burglary more effi efficiently. Yes, it was efficiently. To enter planning mode, look at a marked tenant and press right mouse button. You will see waypoints indicating where the tenant will move in the next few hours. You can upgrade this skill at your computer so it shows more waypoints. Okay. Hmm. See, that saved you the need of going through the journal. My sources say he leaves the house at 5 p.m. There's a problem though. You can't break mm. in with the crowbar because the guy has a sound alarm. It'll be triggered. You gotta learn lock picking. Oh great. Drive to your new hideout and check the computer. I have a task for you. Oh, you some more experience. Okay. Interesting. Oh, so this is still the thing. Okay. Okay. So it says drive to my hideout. Drive out of the area and go to your hideout. Mm. Well, like I said before, the game is still running pretty smoothly. Whoops. Okay, let's go. Have I got any lights? If I have, I can, oh, the controls H. Oh, 
the lights seem to come on automatically, did they? Kind of, yeah, they did. I'm driving everywhere. So, uh, drive out. So I think you can just drive out of any area, any of the boundaries of the map, I think. And it will give me the option to go to hideout. Yeah, and again, that's a, that is a little bit of a cop out. A little bit. I would like to be able to drive more around the map. But like I said before, if they are a lower, lower budget game, I can kind of understand why they've done that. Okay. I have to show you around in your new world. So this is like the base area. I have to say the base area looks nicer than the first game. From what I can remember the first game, it was a bit like a warehousey style thing that we had in the first game as our base. Interact. So this is where we loot stuff maybe. Is it like where we flog stuff automatically maybe? Not sure. For some reason, we've got a gas canister. Not quite sure why that is. Jewelry table, which is locked. We got ourselves a backpack, a, well, a storage area, of course, in our base. Uh, got ourselves, oh, it is quite nice, this base. Uh, something which I have no idea what that is a box opening is it a youtuber unboxing table <laughs> table <laughs> I need one of those but yeah I have no idea that's kind of funny right obviously we've got a safe why do I have to crack my own safe that's weird um locks oh so these oh so these are probably for practicing on you can use these to practice lock picking yeah I believe they had that in the first game as well. Learn the pickpocketing skill to practice. Oh, that's cool. We've even got a pickpocketing thing. A radio, which I'm not gonna turn on because of the YouTube copyrights. I wonder if I can steal my own stuff. Anything in here that I can steal my own stuff? No? Wow, I don't have anything in here, man. Apart from a few plates, clearly. And some beer. But well, I can drink the beer. Oh, I can drink beer. Nice. Uh, I got some. I really need to tidy up in here, don't I? Got some random stuff on the go. Yeah, nothing to see here, pretty much. Hmm, a fridge that you can't open. A little laptop. Electronics level one. So, obviously, this is the start of the game. A lot of stuff is still locked. Well, this is not a very nice bathroom with a mirror that doesn't work. <laughs> but yeah, like I said though, uh, this is a lot nicer as a home base than what we got in the first game. A lot nicer. Um, right, he wants me to go back here. I should have maybe come here first, but never mind. Okay. Steel gear. Rob tips. Uh, mm. Oh, 102. So I need to gather information. And it's all free. Black Bay, Hell Neighbor, Hell Neighbor, Hell Neighbor, Hell Neighbor, Destroy the Window 102, Smash a Few Things 102, okay, we don't have any other options, but mm, interesting. Hmm, okay. Wow, a lot of phone calls at the beginning of this game. When you steal things and complete jobs, you get experience. With enough ex 
experience, you can learn new skills, such as lockpicking, which is needed to break into 103. Get to 102 and complete the job you just accepted. Should be rather easy. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave this video here. It's been about 25 minutes, but I think I'll make another video and I will carry on to show more of this first part of the game. And then after that, I'll see how it goes. I'll play the, the game a bit more off video after that and see if it's worth doing more um, videos on it. My first impressions are it's pretty much the same style as the first game. Of course, it's been upgraded slightly graphically, but as I start to dive into the the gameplay more, it'll be interesting to see how much they've actually improved it, you know. So, yeah, as always, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.